we've had a first here at the Snapchick World Headquarters, a bona fide digital medium format camera. And it has been a very interesting and educational experience. If you have been following me for a decade, you know that we've shown off plenty of cameras here in the studio, so it's not our first rodeo, but to properly review a camera with a sensor like this and a rear screen like this, we had to take it somewhere bigger than life. So we packed up the car and we drove to Bryce Canyon in Utah for a long weekend of trails, vistas, and rainbows. I mean, why not take a camera that we've never used before immediately to a vast outdoor wonderland while still learning how the camera works? As it turns out, we were, were very much at home with this camera. Hasselblad loaned me the X1D 250C to do exactly this, to take the experience that I have with more mainstream cameras and see how it translates to this medium format monster. They loaned me the Compact XCD 45P, which is 45 millimeters and f4, and I rented an additional XCD 21 millimeter f4 lens to capture some wider angles at Bryce Canyon with all of its majesty. Medium format seems to thrive in landscapes, studio work, portraits, and other environments where quality, but not necessarily speed, are paramount. More on that in a moment, because with this camera, Hasselblad is challenging some of the traditional notions about medium format. First, the body and sensor. I'll put some specs up on screen right now, too. Now, 50 megapixels on a sensor larger than what we commonly call full frame. That makes the crop factor less than one. It's about 0.8x. So if you have a 20 millimeter lens on medium format, it will act more like a 16 millimeter lens would on a full frame camera. Plus you'll be able to achieve shallower depths of field at wider angles with medium format. It helps to create what many call the medium format look. It's not just about sensor size though. Hasselblad takes their color science and the creation of their lenses quite seriously. More on that in a minute. The key with this camera is that it's medium format that you can take with you easily and unapologetically. It's a smaller form factor than the Nikon D6 that I reviewed earlier this week, but with a larger sensor. It has a deep grip that extends on both the front and rear of the camera. So in short, you can really grip it. It's not a camera that you would feel like you're lugging around, even though that can be the perception of larger format film and digital sensors. What that means is that 
they got one of the traditional downsides of medium format out of the way. You can easily handhold it, move it around, hike with it, and certainly mount it to a tripod for low light situations like sunrise or sunset, and to, you know, fuel that time-lapse addiction. This is not the only compact medium format body in town, but it's certainly one of a select few. To me, the usability of the camera is just as important as the results that I'm able to achieve with it. In fact, the two are intertwined. If I don't find a camera easy or enjoyable to use, I won't use it, and then I won't get those fantastic results that I could potentially get. If a camera is easy to use, then I'm more likely to take it with me and use it more often, giving me a better chance at those phenomenal results. <laughs> it's all related. There are very few buttons and dials on the camera. Everything is done very efficiently. That is something that I like. There are capable cameras that are designed purely for function with lots of buttons and dials. And there are capable cameras that are highly functional, but also have a design philosophy behind the ergonomics and operation. This is one of those. The buttons and dials that it does have are well thought out and are in easy to reach places. The only thing that I really wish were different is the ability to move the focus area more fluidly. You have to either use the touch screen on the back of the camera, which I'll discuss more in just a moment, or push the autofocus manual focus button on the top of the camera for one second, and then use the front and rear command dials to move the autofocus area up and down or left and right. It's not quick. It's doable. I did it. I got as quick as I could with it, but I would have liked a joystick or a D-pad of some sort on the back of the camera to move the focus area around. It's not a deal breaker, and for medium format, this is a nimble camera, but my heritage is with full frame and crop sensor cameras that are more flexible in this department. Back to that LCD screen. It's huge and high quality and has a 60 frames per second refresh rate. It's nice. It is fixed, meaning that it does not tilt or flip out. I have come to appreciate that feature on other cameras, so I missed it here. Lack of a tilt screen just makes it more difficult in the field to do low angle shots. The screen is a touch screen, which brings us to the overall UI. While you can use the command dials and also the few buttons to the right of the LCD screen, the UI was really designed to be used with the touch screen, and it works quite well. That being said, I do use my camera with gloves on quite often, and touch screen gloves just don't always work very well, so I do wish that I could use the menus easier without touch. Adding that D-pad would solve this issue as well. Hasselblad committed to this camera being used primarily with touch, and I can respect that. We use our phones with touch all the time, but I'm still not quite comfortable using it on my cameras, at least not 100% of the time. That's a matter of preference though. And I do like the principle that they don't complicate the camera by making it work for every preference. They've designed a camera and the methods that the camera is used. There aren't 19 function buttons here. There's a feature set that when used as it's designed, it sets you up for success with the camera. Medium format in general is a more deliberate process. This isn't a fire and forget it camera. This is a camera intended for you, the photographer, to create the image and your art from the world around you. But what about image quality? I expected a lot and I was not disappointed. And we know that the lens has just as much or even more to do with the image quality than the body itself. And from the two lenses that I tried, I learned that Hasselblad matches the quality of the body and lenses, both in terms of build quality and in terms of output. Light renders beautifully with a glow that I normally associate with Leica cameras and lenses. Each Hasselblad lens for this camera has a leaf shutter in the lens. This helps keep the size of the body down while giving you up to one two thousandth flash sync, which is pretty amazing and virtually unheard of elsewhere. That gives you just more options to realize your creative vision. The materials of the body and lens are extremely robust and weatherproof. When you have it in your hands, there's no doubt that it can handle any reasonable conditions. We had mixed weather daily in Bryce Canyon, rain 
wind, sun, a lot of dust, as you can see in some of the photos. And temperature varied from very cold to very warm between day and night, and it worked fine throughout. I feel that I should say that you should always respect your equipment and avoid unnecessary risks, but the message here is if you're getting that great dynamic shot, be smart with this or any camera, but when it's a once a season or even once in a lifetime shot, you've got the green light to use the camera. Back to image quality. You have 14 stops of dynamic range. That number itself is impressive, but it's how I found that dynamic range to be in practice that impressed me the most. I found that I was able to pull detail out of highlights in a way that I have not experienced on any other camera. For a landscape photographer who is often balancing the exposure between the shadows of the landscape and the brightness of the sky, this is invaluable. So 50 megapixels is a high pixel count, but again, it's the how that is more important. Those pixels are spread over a larger sensor area than full frame. That has major implications for low light performance. You will end up with a cleaner image because more light is able to get to each pixel. I want to touch on colors. Different brands of cameras provide results that look different right out of the camera. Color science. Hasselblad calls theirs the Hasselblad Natural Color Solution. Now you can do pretty much whatever you want with a raw image and post-processing with colors, with light and shadow. You can also modify colors in camera, but it must be said that the images coming out of this camera are beautiful. I did a few test portraits to test out these colors and I'm absolutely in love with the skin tones. Portrait photographers rejoice, wow. Let's talk about the file you record each time you press this pretty orange shutter release button. They're 16-bit raw. Not 12, not 14, 16-bit raw. Uncompressed only. You will use the two card slots if you bring this camera out in the field for any length of time or to do time lapses. The files are just over 100 megabytes each. I had two 128 gig SD cards in the camera and for time lapses, I needed that space. If you're interested, I do have a video where I discuss workflow with large file sizes. I talk about things like having a fast computer and lots of storage, but also some less obvious things. Less obvious things that I do <laughs> to ease my troubles with these large files that we are so lucky to have these days. I'll add a link to that in the description. Overall, this is a medium format camera that is easy to use and the image quality speaks for itself. Even though it's not a fast camera, either with focus or blazing frames per second, although I can do 2.7 frames per second, which given the file size and bit depth is impressive. It's a medium format camera that you can take with you without apology and with little compromise. I mean, if you're after medium format and the quality it delivers, you're not expecting Sony Alpha 9 speed or the size of a compact camera. Medium format makes a statement, both with the hardware and the final image. In fact, I was stopped on the trail down in the bottom of Bryce Canyon during a particularly grueling hike by someone whose eyes got really big and they commented that they've never seen a Hasselblad camera out in real life before. <laughs> that made quite an impression on me because here I was with a Hasselblad medium format camera out in the real world on a long and hot hike without a sore neck or tired hands or anything that I thought might have been a problem before I actually used the camera. Who is this camera for? Why would you choose this over a high resolution camera like a Sony Alpha 7 R4 or the Nikon Z7? What makes this so special and different from those? And the answer is that different people will have different preferences. Two photographers at Bryce Canyon photographing the same sunrise might have completely different ideas of what the appropriate gear is for that perfect shot. But where I see the Hasselblad being desirable is in their collection of top-notch lenses paired with the inherent benefits of the high resolution sensor with those pixels spread over the larger area of medium format. Creative depth of field effects for miles or millimeters as the case may be. Give this video a like if you got that bad joke. But 
if you're the landscape photographer or the portrait photographer or even the photographer who simply takes their time wants to take image quality to the next level and you're not counting frames per second. When other photographers are standing at the rim of Bryce Canyon, talking on and on about the benefits of Nikon versus Sony, Fuji, Canon, Panasonic, and the others, you're a few steps away, waiting for that one cloud to move just where you want it, next to the sun, spreading wonderful beams of light upon the valley beneath. That's it. That's all I can tell you. Well, that's not true. I can talk about cameras, particularly this one, all day long. <laughs> but sadly, I do need to pack it up all snug and send it back to its mommy and daddy at Hasselblad. But I will link to the body and the lenses that I used in the description below so that you can see all of the specifications, the pricing and the availability in your area. For those of you that shoot medium format, I would like to hear from you in the comments. What do you love about medium format and why did you make the leap? And if, if you've been contemplating it, but you don't use medium format, let me know why. And for everyone, let me know if you have any questions about this camera. Make sure that you click like on this video if it was helpful or interesting to you, or if you got my bad joke earlier, <laughs> and please subscribe. I share videos every week here on YouTube about photography, sometimes about gear, sometimes about technique, inspiration sometimes, but all with curiosity and persistence. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.